Father Dave here, priest, boxer, father of four, troublemaker. I was reminded by the Hebrew Bible reading we had last Sunday that in the days of old God would send prophets to speak to the rulers of the people to remind them that they were answerable to a higher authority than themselves. And in spite of that, I thought I might try broadcasting a message to the Premier of our state to remind her that, uh, and according to our common faith tradition, a political leadership is a spiritual issue and that a failure to be a good shepherd uh, can not only lose you the support of the people but can put you on a collision course with the Almighty. I hear in particular from my, from my Lebanese friends, from my Muslim friends, and most especially from my Muslim Lebanese friends, that they are feeling targeted in the west and inner west of Sydney, targeted by these lockdowns. And I can understand why they feel that. They're suffering economically, as many of us are. But more than that, they feel that their humanity is being compromised by harsh rules that don't make much sense to them, and a lot of which, quite frankly, don't make a lot of sense to any of us. Uh, my understanding is that the word used for skin in the Hebrew Bible, baza, is, is it's that which makes us human because we can touch one another. And I wonder, if we're not allowed to touch one another, can we be fully human? I mean, this is only a small example of a larger problem. But I do wonder to what extent these lockdowns designed to save human lives actually destroy the ability to live a truly human life. And I really wonder whether anybody should have the right to tell another human being that they can't embrace those they love or that they can't meet together for prayer and worship or that they can't be with their loved ones who are dying or that they can't grieve together when those loved ones do die. I mean, some things are sacred. And while we all recognise that individual freedoms do need to be limited at some point for the sake of the well-being of the broader community, we surely need to draw the line at some point too. And when freedoms are mitigated to the point where businesses and families are destroyed and where domestic violence is increasing and depression is on the rise and suicide looks like the only answer. Perhaps it's time to say enough is enough. A couple of weeks ago, a lot of us in Sydney went out to protest. <laughs> it hadn't even clicked with me at the time that it was illegal to protest, but I realised subsequently that a lot of people there were, were fully aware of the fact that they were risking arrest and fines that they couldn't afford in order to have their voices heard. And I must say, Madam Premier, that I was deeply disappointed by your response. You had the opportunity at that point to say, I hear what you're saying, I, I sympathise with your grief, I understand your pain. And instead you said, I'm going to get you and you went to war with us and you arrested us and fined us and you even brought in the army. And now I hear the whir of army helicopters overhead at night and I see these images of violence and unrest and I see videos of women screaming and men being wrestled to the ground and punches being thrown and oh, it didn't have to be this way. You know, I think so much of the problem, not just for you, Madam Premier, but with all our pol politicians today, is that there's not a lot of skin in the game. <clears throat> not many Roman emperors died quietly in their own beds. <laughs> Indeed, I believe the last recorded sight sighting of Constantine the Eleventh was of him girding up his loins with his sons by his side and his broadsword in his hand, crying, Charge! I mean, if those leaders made hard decisions that threatened the livelihood of their people, they were in the front line, sharing the fate of their people. And that just doesn't happen nowadays. We see our political leaders on full salaries, driving in chauffeur-driven cars, living a long way away from the hot spots that they're locking down and sharing in none of the hardships endured by the rest of us. Uh, 
Madam Premier, the battle is not lost. I, I believe that your relationship with your people can still be retrieved, but you'll need to put some skin in the game. I mean, you should, at the very least, come down and walk the streets of the areas you're locking down and talk to the people there as one human being to another because, because, because we need to be taken seriously. I mean, I'll be happy to introduce you to, to some of my Lebanese friends and some of my Muslim friends and some of my Lebanese Muslim friends. In fact, I'll be happy to introduce you to a whole variety of people who are feeling suffocated and destroyed by the decisions that you are making. Please, I pray you do something before things deteriorate any further. May God bless you and give you wisdom. This is Father Dave.